Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome back. Happy summer. I have officially finished my freshman year at college which means I am home for summer break and I have time to film videos again and to read. Well kind of. I do start a job in June but I have more time, you know, my studies aren't as pressing because they're non-existent at the moment. So anyway, I thought I would go ahead and kick off the summer by telling y'all all the books that I read over this past semester and just my general thoughts. Those that I was able to do videos on, I am just going to kind of say the title and then move on. I'll try to remember to link the actual video in the description, but yeah, we have I believe like 10 books to get through so let's let's get going. <laughs> First and foremost I read Heirlooms by Sandra Bird and I gave this book three stars. I really did enjoy the story. It is a dual timeline and I liked the historical story more than the present day story. Um, I'd say it was probably like a three and a half stars. Um, I, I really liked the emotional aspect of the characters reaching closure and reconciliation on some of their past and learning of some of the deep wounds that had been inflicted and then healed in their family's past and I just yeah I, I thought it was it was really sweet and I enjoyed seeing the continuum of friendship from one generation to the next. Next I read All the Lost Places by Amanda Dykes. This was a five star read and I did do a review on it so go watch that. Same with the next one which is A Long Time Coming by Robin W. Pearson. This was my first Robin W. Pearson book, not actually not my last of the semester. I. I have a whole review on this book so go watch that because I have a lot of thoughts but just general it was a three star read for me. Next I read The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton and Kate Morton is one of my favorite non-Christian authors but this book just did not do it for me. I had read a few reviews and just a general consensus that this was not her best work and I tried not to go into it with that bias of I'm not going to like it or that mindset but I ended up not liking it. The The general consensus was correct. This was not her best work and it felt very rushed and put together. And normally a Kate Morton book will have fairly close to the end, there'll be like this sucker punch moment of all of the clues have been pointing to that person did it and then it'll like shift in a different direction and it'll suddenly be, oh, everything else was actually pointing to this, but you didn't quite see it. Um, and there was no, there was no real moment like that in the book. I think there was meant to be, but I really saw it coming all along. Yeah, so I didn't quite like it. Two stars. Next, I read All Through the Night by Tara Johnson. I gave this book four stars and I did do a review of it. I thought this was an incredibly sweet book and just general thoughts are I want to read more by Tara Johnson. I've read two books by her now. I'm not sure if she has any more. She does. She has another one published in 2019 it looks like. Yeah, so I I can't wait to see what more she does in the Christian fiction world, especially the civil war civil civil war world. There we go. Um cuz I just think I think her writing is brilliant, um especially how she writes characters. Okay, next, moving on. I reread Emma by Jane Austen for I believe the sixth time in my life. Emma is my favorite book of all time if you did not know that. Uh and I just genuinely, I love it so much. So obviously five stars. <laughs> Next, I read The Sound of Light by Sarah Sundin. This is her most recent release. And I gave this book five star, or no, I did not. I gave it four stars, apologies. I think this, The Sound of Light is definitely one of the best Sarah Sundin novels I have read. I, I, I did a whole reading vlog on this. So go watch that for more in-depth thoughts, but I just really appreciated how much she focused on the actual war and not just the romance within a war setting. And yeah, it was just, it was beautiful. Okay, next up I read The Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Rimmer. This was a secular book, but I did actually give this book five stars. I would proceed with caution 
when it comes to like there were definitely a few scenes with language in them and I cannot really give anything else away without spoiling it but this was one of the best secular World War II novels probably one of the best secular novels I've ever read. Well, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but it was it was a really good book and I so genuinely enjoyed it. We have a present day story of a, was she a writer? No, 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 she was a stay at home mom, my bad. Um, she was a stay at home mom to her, for her son who, I can't remember if he had autism or he had a learning disability of some kind that was very low functioning, I guess is the word you would say. He could not communicate very well. Her grandmother is in the hospital passing away and she's trying to uncover, or she's trying to help her grandmother um, communicate as well. And so these, these communication skills that she had learned with her um, son is helping her communicate with her grandmother and she ends up going on this whole trip to Poland to uncover these secrets that her grandmother wants uncovered but can't speak them because she had a stroke. And then we also have the historical perspective of the grandmother during World War II, except, you know, she's a young girl at the time, and her romance and all of the trauma and just suffering that she goes through. It's not just romance, it's legit, legitimate trauma. The way that Kelly Rimmer wrote about fear and anxiety in this novel was so keen and so well described. I I don't think I've ever read fear written in such a way that I could genuinely feel the fear of the character and feel the absolute physical and mental struggle that the character was going through. Okay, Moving on, next I read another secular World War II novel, uh, which was The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I believe this book is a bit more popular in the secular circle. And I'm gonna be honest, y'all, I did not like it. I gave it three stars, but I, it, I'd probably say more like two and a half stars. You just can't do the half stars on Goodreads. Um, just be forewarned, I'm gonna spoil this book in my very brief um, review of it. After a certain point, the entire book's motivation or the entire character's motivation is revenge and as a Christian that is not something that I agree with. Uh, um, I believe in forgiveness and mercy. Yeah I just did not agree with the whole theme of revenge to the point of killing the person that was that did the wrongdoing. There came a point, I kept reading it because I did think that it was going to get to a point where they didn't end up killing this guy and that that, that was going to be the, the character development and how they overcame their personal struggles. I was wrong. They did end up killing the person that they wanted to kill and it just did not sit right with me and I really disliked it and I, I strongly do not recommend this book for a Christian reader, for any reader, but specifically not a Christian reader because it just, it disagrees with all of the morals that we should agree with. That was my TED talk. Um, next is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, the first book specifically. I, this was such a random read. I don't really read fantasy or dystopian much at all, but it was kind of like there was a resurgence of popularity and I had the first book laying around and I never read it and so I decided to just read it and see what all the hype was about. I would give it three stars. I kind of want to keep reading the series but it's not like a pressing thing. It was it was interesting. It was very YA. Okay and then finally we have The Medallion by Kathy Golge. I gave this book four stars and I might do an entire review for this book just because I have a lot of thoughts on it and I don't think I can pack them all into this video. Let me, let's just say this. The first 75% of the book I thought was great and I really liked. The last 25% I had some problems with. Let me know if I should get more into that. I think I'm going to do it anyway just because I, I want to be able to voice all my thoughts. Yeah, okay, and then currently, I actually need to update, update my Goodreads right now. I am currently reading Storm in the Land of Rain by Sylvia Foti, I believe is how you say her last name. And it is actually a nonfiction memoir of 
uh, the author's journey of uncovering the truth about what her grandfather did during World War II. She grew up believing he was a hero of Lithuania, where her family is from, and she actually uncovers that he was a Nazi collaborator and aided in killing a good percentage of the Jews in Lithuania. And it is fascinating. I am so enjoying reading it, but that is my current read, and I'm hoping to finish that by the end of the week. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read this semester in the book I'm currently reading. I've kind of run out of time. I might do a short video on the books that I DNF'd because I DNF'd a lot of books this semester and I just kind of want to talk about them for why I did it and why I wouldn't recommend them and why I probably won't pick them up again. But anyway, I have a couple of video ideas for the summer. I think I'm going to take you book shopping with me one time, go to a secondhand store and try to uh, get my summer TBR secondhand instead of buying new. Yeah, just take you along for part of the summer, maybe vlog a little bit. I don't know, that's not really my strong suit, but let me know what you would like to see. Let me know if there's books you think I should focus on um, or whatever. Whatever you'd like to see, let me know and maybe it will get made. But thank you all so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye!